Ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. You're listening to the Deal Room Podcast. Join us as we bring you the inside scoop on business sales and acquisitions. Get across trends in the area and hear the industry's best recount their real life tips, traps, and experiences. Now, here's your host, Joanna Oki. Hi, it's Joanna Oki here and welcome back to the Deal Room Podcast, a podcast proudly brought to you by our commercial legal practice, Aspect Legal. Now, today we have a very topical podcast for you, all about transactions involving foreign investors and in particular, the FERB approval process that has changed, or indeed in particular, the threshold that has changed in relation to the FERB approval process in the recent... Recent COVID epidemic. So today we're talking about the changes that have come into play in relation to the FERB approval process and the FERB approval thresholds. And we are also just looking at foreign investment and the processes and thresholds as a whole. So to talk about this topic, we have on board Joe Wright from our very own Aspect Legal. So let's launch straight into it with Joe. Hi, Joe. Welcome on to the Deal Room podcast. Hi, Joanna. How are you? I am fabulous. Thank you so much for joining us today. Now, Joe, how about you kick it off by um, why don't you give us a quick background of your experience in the um, FERB space? Okay, sure. I started my legal career at Mallison's, King and Wood Mallison's, and was predominantly in mergers and acquisitions, but a large part of that work was with their foreign investment team. And we I worked for probably four to five years doing foreign investment applications to Treasury and I'm working on a range of matters from acquisitions, business acquisitions to land acquisitions, unit trusts, Australian land um, holdings, various range of acquisitions and dealing with clients from both foreign investors as well as foreign foreign government investors. So dealt with probably in my time, I think roughly 150 FERB applications while I was at Mallison's, ranging from all sorts of different transactions from property to corporate to land acquisitions. So quite a diverse range. Great. Okay, wonderful. And look, the reason why we're talking about this obviously today is because uh, the big news of the moment is the new provisions that, and the temporary provisions that have come through changing the thresholds that apply to the requirement for getting FERB approval for acquisitions in Australian businesses by foreign investors. So maybe um, can you give us a little bit of an overview of what the position was prior to these changes and then also we'll then start to delve into what the changes are. So prior to, now what was the date? Uh, it was the end of March, I think, that this um, that, that these changes came into place. Yeah, so on the 29th of March, the Australian government announced um, two significant changes to the foreign investment regime. So prior to that, they, if a foreign investor wants to acquire a business or an interest, whether it's land or business or property um, in Australia, then they need to go through and see whether the transaction is a notifiable transaction under the relevant legislation, which is the Foreign Acquisitions and Takeovers Act, um, or everyone calls it the FATA. Um, so if the acquisition is either voluntarily notifiable or notifiable under compulsorily notifiable under the FATA, then it's usually a transaction that goes for FERB approval. And basically the way that those acquisitions work is that there's usually a monetary threshold. Um, so if an acquisition hits that monetary threshold, then it will be notifiable. And then the second criteria is whether the person is acquiring enough of a percentage interest in whatever they're acquiring. So whether they're acquiring, say, a 25% interest in a business and that would trigger the notification, whether as opposed to a 10% interest, which is lower than the threshold. So what the government did on the 29th of November was basically remove the monetary threshold for all investors and remove it down to a zero threshold. So if there's a foreign investor that, whether it's foreign government or 
an individual or a corporation, they're acquiring an interest in Australia, then there is no monetary threshold that applies at the moment for the next six months. Mm -hmm. But we still have the proportionate ownership threshold. Correct. So there's still the proportionate ownership threshold. So they need to be acquiring, depends on who the investor is. So if it's a corporation or a foreign person, then they need to be acquiring in terms of a business acquisition, more than 20% of that business. If they're a foreign government investor, then they will be, then their direct investment criteria still applies, which is 10% of a company. There's different thresholds for land. So any interest, any acquisition in land, there's no percentage interest there. So so that still applies. So it really comes down to businesses. The second criteria that they, the second big change they made was the notification or the processing time that they will take to process an application. So usually the turnaround time for FERB is 30 days that they will get back to and approve an application. Whereas now they've extended that out to up to six months Mm. but having said that even though they've made that change in terms of the time frame of up to six months it's unlikely that it depends on what the transaction is but it's unlikely that some transactions will take that full six months period to get approved but it does come down to what the nature of that transaction is sure i mean you you know that's a long period of time though that it could take isn't it so i I guess that's why it's really important that professionals are engaged in dealing with businesses that might be selling to a foreign investor um, have to be or or, you know acting for the foreign investor uh, on the on the buy side have to be aware that they're they're might be significant delays in the timing of completion whilst the FERB approval is um, is dealt with. Yeah, that's correct. But it, it depends on like as it depends on the transaction. And if the transaction is designed to stimulate an Australian business or to stimulate jobs or retain jobs in Australian business and there's an urgency to that transaction going ahead then there's a chance that it will be processed within the 30 days. And in fact, I've seen some transactions that have been turned around within a matter of days um, wow. over the last few weeks since those changes have come in. And those transactions have been deemed urgent because they are designed to fit into the government's criteria in terms of um, stimulating Australian businesses and retaining jobs. Mm. So if they if there is a priority in that area, then they will process them quickly. But so it's yeah, if there's a transaction that will protect and support Australian businesses and jobs, then it will get a higher priority in the processing. If there's a transaction that say it's an internal reorganisation, um, or it's an internal re- reorganisation that will trigger the FERB notification, or it's for say, tax purposes, then that's unlikely to be processed anytime soon. <laughs> and that would be falling <laughs> sort of to the bottom of the um, the priority list. And in fact, I've seen some commentary where for internal reorganisations, there's some commentary saying, just wait until the six months is over because Treasury is not going to be interested in processing mm. those applications. Mm. That might be a bit of a harsh response. They probably will assess them, but they won't be a high priority. Mm. I guess that brings back into for the point that we should be making here, which we did mention in the beginning, but let's mention it again, that these are only temporary measures. They're only in place for six months. And then at the end of that six month period, we back to the previous regime that um, had a much higher monetary threshold. Well, <laughs> we're talking about a zero threshold right now. The threshold in the past was 254 million or something like that. I, I think, is that right? Yeah, it's currently 275 million. And you're right, like the thresholds are incredibly high for, and in fact, they're high for, so free trade agreement partners, they have a threshold of an of a billion and one hundred nine thousand and one hundred ninety million, however you say it, one point one nine two million. Um, so very high threshold for free trade countries, and then for everyone else, the threshold is usually two seventy five million. But the, the other thing to note is that these changes are not to dampen foreign investments. They're not. They're, it's a lot of their publicity has been saying, well, every transaction is going to be notifiable now, and every transaction is going to be scrutinized. That's not necessarily true. It is 
as you mentioned before, the percentage threshold still comes into play. And it's also these, the ability to scrutinise, these measures have been put in place for two reasons. One is to protect Australian jobs and to support Australian businesses. And so if a foreign investor can show that their acquisition is doing that, then there's going to be no issue. Um, it's the scrutiny will come where businesses are, where a foreign investor is trying to, I guess, snap up something that's been incredibly devalued over during the COVID period or to, uh, to take advantage of this unusual economic time. So it's really designed to protect those businesses as opposed mm. to stop foreign investment. And this brings me to another point that I wanted to delve into, which is the mistakes that can be made during the application process. And, you know, I think one of the things that you're pointing out here, uh, which I think is important to make clear, is that there is a perhaps a, a right strategy and, and perhaps a wrong strategy or mistakes that can be made along the way. So let's just perhaps touch very briefly on any issues that you have seen in the past with, you know, applications that have been made perhaps poorly by others that have created issues where they didn't need to be created? I think the bottom line is communication is key. So FERB is a very misunderstood area of the law. And one of the myths to dispel is that there's actually, everyone refers to it being FERB approval. And the approval actually comes from Treasury. So the Treasurer has the ultimate decision-making responsibility in respect to all applications that come through. And the Foreign Investment Review Board, FERB, is an advisory board to Treasury. So the application actually is made to the Department of Treasury and the Department of Treasury or the ATO, depending on the nature of the application, will then assess that application and then make the decision or the recommendation to the Treasurer. And the decision is made by the Treasurer as opposed to the Foreign Investment Review Board, but they do play an advisory role. So referring to it as verb approval is not necessarily correct, but it is kind of a colloquial way everyone refers to it. So foreign investment is a a very misunderstood area of the law, and that's because there's the legislation that's at play, but in the past there's also been the policy that's been at play as well. So it comes down to a lot of, in an application, you need to address the national interest criteria, and the national interest criteria basically underlies every application. So to get approval for a foreign acquisition, you need to pass the national interest test. And that is not a defined term. And the government is very reluctant to give clear guidance on what that term means because they want flexibility in how they apply it um, for different circumstances. And actually COVID provides a perfect example that they've now what's in the national interest is businesses and jobs. But that's not necessarily the case on every acquisition. So when people make an application to FERB, because people don't understand necessarily the steps involved or what the criteria is, often they don't fully provide enough information to Treasury for them to assess the application or to understand the application. And that can be, that's a lot, that's one of the big hurdles in the application process is there's a lot of areas that are misunderstood Mm. and misunderstood in terms of how to provide the application, what information you do provide, and then how it's assessed and what criteria Treasury is looking at in that assessment of the application. Mm. And it all comes down to the fact that the national interest is not a defined term, it's not a defined test, it's very open, it's very opaque, it's very flexible in the way that the government applies that and they'll apply it differently based on the different transaction. Mm. And so I guess, you know, the point is, this is one of those instances where, you know, perhaps it can seem like you're going through a ticker box exercise in terms of information that you're providing and answers that you're providing. But the reality is there's a lot of commercial now um, and legal now that really needs to happen be- behind the scenes to make sure you're providing the right information in the right way to maximise your chances of a positive outcome rather than something that drags on forever or doesn't get you the the approval that you're after. Absolutely. That's absolutely right. You've explained that perfectly. And it's when you said about the approval that you're after, conditions can be made on FERB approval. So often FERB approvals, it, the rejection rate's very low. So usually an acquisition has a high approval rate, but there can be conditions placed on it. And those conditions can be placed on it if there is misunderstanding in that application process. 
Mm. And I guess we yet to see how the landscape will fully play out in the next six months as well. So whilst the application, the approval rate may have been high in the past, you know, maybe it'll take a beating right now. I guess it will be interesting to see (laughs) what goes on in this next six month period. But uh, well, yeah, I guess we're in unprecedented times and yeah, yeah. we'll wait and see what happens because never before, I don't think, in the history of, um, well, my, from my experience, the threshold's never been zero. So it's going to capture a lot of um, transactions. Yeah. And so this is a point I think it's really important for our listeners just to, to understand, just for us to really ram home some of these important points. The monetary threshold is zero now for foreign investors. So if you are acting for a foreign investor or you're acting on the sell side for an Australian entity that's selling to a foreign investor, and the foreign investor is looking at acquiring more than 20% of the entity if it's non if it doesn't have land or or more than 10% if it does have land or is a land rich entity they now no matter what they're paying they now need to potentially get FERB approval before that transaction can complete yeah that's correct but also they need to be mindful that if they do if the entity does hold land then it's worthwhile getting legal advice on whether it will trigger FERB now because of the definition of an Australian land corporation and it do there's a percentage holding that the corporation will if they hold a certain percentage holding of land then that will trigger FERB and they'll be classed as an Australian land corporation Mm. So many complexities, Joe. So many complexities. <laughs> Definitely. That's why we have verb experts like you on the case. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's a very complex area and there's a lot of different nuances and different definitions and different percentages. And you think that you're all clear in one area and then all of a sudden you realize, oh, that business is an Australian land corporation because it holds these interests in land. And then you're back at being notifiable. So it is a very tricky area of the law. Brilliant. Okay. All right. Well, look, I I guess, do we have any parting words? It's a tricky area of the law. Obviously, be aware that there's now this this absolute change in thresholds that will make a big impact if you're dealing with foreign investors who um, are looking at Australian assets uh, for purchase. Anything else that you want to throw out there, Joe, um, in terms of takeaways for our audience? I guess final remarks would be that if there is transactions not to get scared off by the six-month delay or the zero threshold, um, it's not about limiting or stopping foreign investments. It's still, you know, the Treasurer and the Prime Minister still, still say this country is open for business and is inviting foreign investment. So it's not about being scared off by those criteria. It's just about getting the right advice as to how you can work your transaction in to the current climate. Brilliant. Okay, absolutely love it. Well, Joe, thank you so much for joining us on The Deal Room today. My pleasure. Thanks so much. Well, that's it for this episode of The Deal Room Podcast. And of course, in this episode, we were talking with the fabulous Joe Wright, who's one of our senior lawyers here at Aspect Legal and who is a specialist in dealing with the FERB approval process. Now, if you'd like more information about this topic, then head over to our website at thedealroompodcast.com where you'll be able to download a transcript of this podcast episode if you'd like to read it in more detail. There you'll also be able to find out how you can contact Joe Wright or any of our other legal eagles at Aspect Legal. If you or your clients would like to discuss any legal aspects of foreign investment um, or the FERB approval process, as Joe spoke about today, there are a lot of mistakes that can be made in this area and certainly one of those areas where it's absolutely imperative that you have a specialist expert advice guiding you through the process. And of course, there are many, many, many businesses and many transactions that will be captured now that had not been captured in the past in terms of foreign investment into Australian businesses because they simply hadn't met the thresholds that were in place in the past. And of course, as we said, the threshold right now for the period of time that these new temporary provisions are in place is zero. So if you're involved in a transaction, you're concerned that the transaction 
might trigger the requirements for FERB approval, then get in contact. We can help guide you through the many considerations and also help you put the application in place if indeed that is required in your situation. Now, of course, we can assist on a lot more than just advice on foreign investment and the FERB approval process. We can, of course, assist through our great range of services to help guide businesses through sales, acquisitions and mergers. So if you or any of your clients are looking at sale or acquisition, then just get in touch. As I said, you can find us on the website, thedealroompodcast.com, where you can book an initial free discussion with any of our legal eagles at Aspect Legal, or you can head over to our website at www.aspectlegal.com.au. We work with clients both big and small and have different types of services depending on size and complexity. So don't hesitate to book an appointment if you'd like to find out how we might be able to assist. Well, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the discussion today with me, Joanna Oki, and of course, our very special guest, Joe Wright from Aspect Legal. You have been listening to the Deal Room podcast, which of course is brought to you by our commercial legal practice, Aspect Legal. See you next time. Aspect Legal has a number of great services that help businesses prepare for a sale or acquisition to help them prepare in advance and to get transaction ready. We've also got a range of services to help guide businesses through the sale and acquisitions process. We work with clients both big and small and have different types of services depending on size and complexity. We provide a free consultation to discuss your proposed sale or acquisition. So see our show notes on how to book a time to speak with us or head over to our website at aspectlegal.com. Dot AU. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, that will conclude this evening's entertainment. Thanks for listening to the Deal Room Podcast. To find out more about this episode and other episodes in the series, check out the show notes or head over to our website at thedealroompodcast.com.au.